after first supporting the destruction of multiple nations that sparked the refugee crisis, and then supporting the unprecedented tsunami of Islamic immigration into Europe, establishment voices in government, media, and finance are all acknowledging the obvious, Europe has been pushed to the brink of collapse. Lawlessness is spreading, budgets are breaking, crime is soaring, fear and hatred are being fueled, and it is getting worse quickly. From the New York Times and billionaire globalist George Soros to government officials from across the block, the very same forces that helped spawn the mushrooming chaos are now starting to talk publicly about how serious it is. Words like collapse, the brink, and implosion are now part of the everyday lexicon as the escalating crisis sweeps through the continent like a wildfire. And as of now, there is little being done to even tap the brakes in a serious manner. Even without statements from establishment sources, the magnitude of the crisis is becoming increasingly clear. Across wide swaths of the continent, the chaos surrounding the refugee situation is quickly spiraling out of control, and becoming impossible to conceal. Consider, for example, the mass sexual assaults on New Year's Eve across Germany and beyond. At just one train station, located in Cologne, Authorities estimate that some 1,000 male refugees were involved in sexually assaulting women in one night. Other cities across Europe witnessed similar horrors. Even German children are taking to YouTube to implore their parents to wake up and protect them. In France, meanwhile, the implosion of law and order in and around Calais has been making headlines as roaming bands of migrants and alleged refugees wreak havoc. The overrunning of Stockholm's central station by gangs of North African youths robbing, groping, and assaulting citizens and security officials alike recently made headlines, too, as police claim they are powerless to stop it. Similar lawlessness and chaos is spreading to other areas of the continent. And now, the establishment is talking about it. It could be that the establishment is merely pointing out the obvious to avoid losing what little remains of its credibility with the public. After all, people have eyes to see and are unlikely to be persuaded by even the best propagandists that their eyes are lying to them. Also possible, though, is that the establishment is hoping to seize on the crisis that it instigated to advance its agenda, whipping up fear and chaos as a means to an end. In this case, more globalism, regionalism, and statism. Earlier this month, the New York Times, a leading mouthpiece of the establishment, published a column headline Germany on the Brink highlighting some of the massive challenges ahead. Until recently, Europe's assimilation challenge looked unpleasant but not insurmountable, and the likelihood of Yugoslavian-style balkanization relatively remote, wrote Ross Douth that in the op-ed touching on growing fears of Eurabia and mass Islamification. With the current migration, though, we're in uncharted territory. Noting that the overwhelming majority of the refugees are young men, the Times column points out that such skewed sex and age ratios are likely to be destabilizing. As one possible option to deal with that, the columnist suggests the refugees could bring wives and families from their own countries. But that would double or treble this migration's demographic impact, pushing Germany toward a possible future in which half the under-40 population would consist of Middle Eastern and North African immigrants and their children. Of course, the columnist observes that such an immense demographic transformation will not be accepted peacefully, likely resulting in major problems ranging from surging terrorism and political violence to nightmarish instability. To avoid such a fate, something the New York Times and others have helped bring about through non-stop propaganda for war, crushing national sovereignty, open borders, big government, and more, doubt that offers some solutions. Those include closing the borders, deporting able-bodied young men, giving up the illusion that Germany's past sins can be absolved with a reckless humanitarianism, and getting rid of German Janela Angela Merkel. But that appears unlikely, especially in Germany. Other establishment voices are openly pushing for more globalism as the solution to what they now admit is a crisis of immense proportions. Just this week, 
Obama ally and refugee crisis instigator George Soros, the establishment billionaire extremist, warned that the controversial European Union is on the verge of collapse as well over one million Middle Eastern immigrants flooded the bloc last year with encouragement from his outfits. There is plenty to be nervous about, the mega-wealthy hedge fund boss and Rothschild dynasty protégé said in an interview with the New York Review of Books. Merkel correctly foresaw the potential of the migration crisis to destroy the European Union. What was a prediction has become the reality. The EU is falling apart and is in an existential crisis due to the refugee tsunami, he said at the World Economic Forum. Most people know that something has gone terribly wrong. Soros and the dizzying array of non-governmental organizations he funds, of course, have been crucial in bringing Europe to this point. Among other efforts, he promoted the responsibility to protect doctrine that was used to deceive the public into the United Nations approved war that destroyed Libya, not to mention his role in the Syrian civil war that destroyed that nation and displaced millions of people. His front groups have also been instrumental in promoting the mass influx of Islamic refugees into Europe more recently, with strong approval from the European political class. Now, the widely criticized financier has more suggestions for how to deal with the crises that multiple of European leaders have accused him of helping to ferment. Claiming that the EU superstate's response to the refugee crisis and other crises was akin to kicking a ball uphill so that it keeps rolling back down, he said the German people need to save the EU. Now it's time for Germans to decide, do they want to accept the responsibilities and the liabilities involved in being the dominant power in Europe? Soros asked, promoting a new Marshall Plan for the Middle East and Africa. More on that in a future article. EU and national leaders have echoed the rhetoric about the collapse of Europe. British Prime Minister David Cameron, who is trying to beat back a public that is desperate to secede from the EU as it implodes, called for an emergency break on immigration within the EU. French Prime Minister Manuel Valls, meanwhile, warned that the influx would be destabilizing itself and they could not accept every refugee. The EU's ambitions to usurp what remains of national sovereignty with more political union, he said, would be in very grave danger. European Council President Donald Tusk warned that open borders among many European countries would collapse within months if the crisis is not dealt with. While much of Europe is at the breaking point trying to absorb the well over one million refugees to arrive in 2015, and many more expected this year. Germany and Sweden are bearing the most extreme burden. And despite encouraging and facilitating the crisis under the guise of humanitarian concerns, the Swedish government likes to style itself a humanitarian superpower, even the political class responsible for the mess has, in some instances, conceded that it is out of control and cannot continue. This week, for example, British media outlets reported that Swedish police have warned of a crisis, in the heart of the capital city. Swedish police warn that Stockholm's main train station has become unsafe after being taken over by dozens of Moroccan street children, reported the UK Daily Mail. The all-male migrant teen gangs are spreading terror in the centre of the Swedish capital, stealing, groping girls and assaulting security guards, according to Stockholm police. Citing a Swedish-Kurdish economist, the paper previously warned that, if current trends continue, Swedes would be a minority in their own country within 15 years. However, even the nation's most rapidly pro-immigration politicians there have started sounding the alarm as asylum rules and borders are tightened. Pushing for more EU power and help in solving the crisis her government helped create, Swedish Foreign Minister Margot Wallström warned that in the long run, our system will collapse due to the refugee tsunami. Other political leaders have echoed those remarks, with Bloomberg reporting last year that the system in Sweden was buckling. In Germany, meanwhile, the situation is also spinning out of control with huge demonstrations growing larger with every passing week as police and authorities are accused of covering up a massive crime wave. In its efforts to clamp down on concerned Germans, authorities have stepped up 
prosecutions and censorship of Germans who complain too loudly. Pro-mass immigration politicians have even resorted to bizarre conspiracy theories, claiming recently that Russia was trying to stoke unrest over its concerns about a 13-year-old Russian-speaking girl who was reportedly kidnapped and gang-raped in Berlin by refugees. But something is amiss. The same establishment figures that destroyed Middle Eastern nations, Syria, Libya, Iraq, Yemen, Afghanistan, and more with war and caused the refugee crisis, and then demanded that Europe accept millions of Muslim refugees under the phony guise of humanitarian concern, are their same voices now loudly pointing out that Europe is on the verge of collapse and that something must be done. It is no accident, and they are not stupid. The new American will examine some of the myriad agendas being advanced through the orchestrated chaos primarily regionalism, globalism, and statism in Europe and beyond, in an upcoming article. In short, though, the refugee crisis appears to have been engineered in yet another typical example of what legendary French philosopher Frédéric Bastiat described as concocting the antidote and the poison in the same laboratory. Now that the deed is done, politicians and establishment figures are pointing out the obvious, getting ready to exploit the inevitable public reaction. Hopefully the people of Europe and the world will be smarter than to fall for the ruse yet again, as the consequences are 